Hello everyone in Cyber World, welcome back to another video. I'm Richard. And I'm Jennifer, and this is our channel we call Poor Man's DIY. Today's video, we're going to show you how to use the camera for the longer B1 laser. Although you don't need a camera for the laser, there are many good benefits, so we're going to go ahead and show you what the camera can do. We're not going to get into the full details on how to set it up. It actually is pretty simple. It comes in the box, all you have to do is loosen this and you straighten out these bars, and it's pretty much good to go. You have to screw on the camera here. Now the camera, what's very important here, this needs to be level. If you have a tiny level, you could lay it on top here and make sure that it's pointing down. If the camera is moved in any other angle, you're going to get kind of a fisheye view and you're not going to get an accurate uh, capture of whatever it is that you're trying to engrave. So make sure that this is level. The, lo the more level that it is, the better that uh, the image is going to be and where your engraving is going to go. Now for clamping this onto your actual laser itself, it comes with a clamp here, tightens it out, and this is uh, pretty solid. Uh, now. If I were to say anything negative about this is, is I'm not too thrilled about the cable. Unfortunately, uh, the cable, because there's no real place to hang this, it kind of sits around here and I'm worried that I'm going to pull this out one of these times or bump into it. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, I can always just put some tape around this or some Velcro and, and keep it tight. Eh, I might just do that. I will just do some Velcro and put it on there. Unfortunately, something like that doesn't come with the kit itself. All right, as you may have saw when I was doing this, this thing moved, so I'm gonna have to do some readjustments. But we're gonna go ahead and show you how you're going to align everything, uh, configure this so that you can use it. Now, this can actually be used in light burn and also on longer uh, laser burn. We're gonna show you a little bit of the benefits on both. Uh, but with this particular camera, although it came with, um, from longer for us, it can be used with any other laser that you have uh, of similar type of build on here because the, laser, the camera itself is gonna plug into your computer and you'll use the, the software to control this and along with the laser burn to go ahead and engrave where you need. All right, so now let's get into how you have to configure this so that everything is lined up properly. To calibrate the camera, we're gonna put some material into the machine. And this material is what we usually use. To calibrate the camera, we use Lightburn, going into Laser Tools and selecting a Calibrate. Using the calibration card that comes with the camera, we follow the instructions of Lightburn and move it around the workspace as instructed. In the next step of the calibration process, four numbered markers will be engraved in the corners of the workspace. We will be instructed to double click in each one of these markers to further calibrate the camera. We've already done some testing, but here's what the calibration sheet looks like. Now we use the camera to align images that we want to engrave very easily. Now we're going to use a laser burn to calibrate the camera because it has some features that are quite unique.
And this is the calibration sheet that's actually uh, engraved from using the software from Longer of Lightburn. It's a pretty much a similar concept on this one here. Now here is the really cool feature from Laser Burn. You can place multiple items that you wish to engrave on the work surface. Then you add the image that you want to engrave on all the surfaces. You click batch file and it replicates to all the other pieces automatically. I haven't fine tuned it so when I did the batch file each time uh, they came a little bit off but still it was much easier than having to retype the same thing or copy and paste onto every one of those uh, before engraving. So this saves a ton of time for us. All right, normally when I use my uh, diode lasers for anything, uh, it does take a lot of uh, framing to make sure I get the laser lens in the right location so that it cuts. It's never been a very perfect. Uh, it's a matter of moving it, testing it, moving it, test it until I get in the right place. But sometimes you have to end up wasting some wood in order to do that. Uh, with this camera, I don't have to do any kind of framing. I take the picture as long as it's calibrated properly. I take the picture, I put the engraved uh, item that I'm going to use in the software right on top of the, 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 the surface of the wood or acrylic, whatever I'm engraving and I hit go and that's it. Simple, simple things. And as you've seen, you can also do the uh, group uh, uh, engraving all at once. Just place it down and it copies the same thing. I haven't got it perfect on it yet, but some of the things that we're going to use these for are like Christmas tags and whatnot, and they don't have to be perfect. It would be nice if I, I fine tune it a little bit better so that it does look nice. But for right now, I'm thrilled with what this has. So I definitely have some great benefits that I plan on using from here on out. Just to reiterate, you really don't need a camera, but if you're going to do repetitious items, this camera is very beneficial. In addition, uh, I have found that because you can make it so perfect, I can use this camera to pinpoint exactly where I can uh, uh, cut out an item and use up every bit of scrap wood that, that I possibly have so I don't have any uh, waste or, or as little waste as possible. Once again, we would like to thank Longer very much for the camera. Our next video, we're going to show you how to use the rotary device. So until we meet again. Bye-bye. Uh,